for the first time <laughs> since I started doing these again. I remembered to flip my cameras <laughs> so it wasn't backwards. Um, still need to pull it up though. The live stream, I mean. So I can read the chat. There we go. And. Mm -hmm. Okay. I'm assuming I can be heard. Yes. Okay, that's fine. All right. Hi, Elizabeth. Hi, Katie. Um. Whew, I'm kind of sweating now. <laughs> I feel like I was running around a little frantically. Oh. Okay. Get some back and fluff, fluff up the pillow. <laughs> Hi Bruna. Hi Libby. Drag all my stuff. Yeah. Um, so, I'm going to go over what I read this past week, which was a lot, and my, my goals for last week, what I read last week, and then what my goals are for this week, um, and stuff. So, <laughs> um, I've kind of done a read all day the past, yesterday, the day before, and today, because I had three days off of work. Yesterday's was the worst, and then what's-its-faces, Saturday's, I did really well, despite not being able to read for a large amount of time. <clears throat> and then today, I think will be the best out of all three of them because I've nearly met what I did on Saturday and I still have a few more hours in the night, so. But overall, I feel like they've done pretty well. Hi, Diana. <sighs> um, yeah, I had today off of work because um, it was Columbus Day, and, um, Christopher still had to work, but I ended up, like, running errands today, and I was able to, like, get a lot of audiobook listening done. Um, but yeah, I, I guess let's start with going over what my goals were last week, and then what I ended up needing. Hopefully you can see the covers all right. I know you're, the like the book covers. I wonder if I can zoom in or if it's gonna make it too grainy. Let me know how that is. Ooh. Is that better? Is it too grainy? Let me know. Um, so last week uh, my first goal was to finish reading women's work. The First 20,000 Years, which is by Elizabeth Wayland Barber, and the subtitle of this is Women, Cloth, and Society in Early Times. I don't remember if I did a wrap-up of my feelings on this last week or not, but um, it looks fine. Okay, good. I feel like it's a lot better and like more personal than like being zoomed out really far. Um, I... Don't remember if I did like a wrap up of my thoughts on this last time, but I really enjoyed this book. Um, I definitely feel like it did get a little slow in like small areas, but overall, I like blew through it in a couple days. I thought it was like super interesting, and it definitely focuses on cloth. It's not really focusing on any other types of crafting or women's work. It is cloth and the things that you have to do to make cloth. So it does focus on spinning and she like mentions other things like yarn and stuff but it's not really detailed about it. Um, I personally really liked it. I think I said last week, I don't remember if I finished the book when I talked about it, but it's like if it sounds interesting to you then you'll probably enjoy it. And if it sounds boring to you, then you'll probably find it boring because if you don't, if you're not interested in the subject matter, then you probably wouldn't enjoy it. But I personally am super, I super enjoyed it and um, I recommend it if <laughs> you're interested. I liked it quite a bit. 
Um, oh, I did really quick. I didn't read this last week. I read it the week before and I forgot to ever talk about it. So I figured I'd talk about it really quick. Some of you guys suggested this to be um, my like Western read for the Boo to You Readathon, I think is actually what, <laughs> what it's called. Uh, Sarah Plain and Tall by uh, Patricia McLaughlin. And this is the first book in this series. I've never read anything by her before. Um, never read this book before. It's one I somehow missed in my childhood. Um, I liked it though. I don't think it like, if I would personally say it's like blueberry wet, metal worthy. Like it was enjoyable. I gave it three stars and I would consider continuing on with the series. But I don't feel like it like changed my life or it would have changed my life as a kid. So if you don't know what this is about, it's about these two kids and their dad. It's like mid 1800s living like on the prairie and their mother passed away at the youngest kid's birth. So it's been many years and the dad has never remarried and he like rode away for like basically a mail order bride and a girl answers it but she says that she doesn't like want to commit until she meets the kids and see how they get along and so then she ends up coming out to visit and she's from Maine and the writing on this was really lovely um it was very strange though like it was both very like staccato but like very lyrical at the same time, like depending on who was talking. It had some very beautiful descriptions in it, but it's just like these kids, they like so desperately want a mother and they so desperately want Sarah to be their mother. And yeah, I don't know. I'm glad I finally read it. I'm glad I finally know what this book is about because I really had no clue before. Um, But I read that last week, <laughs> and I for the week before last, and I forgot to ever talk about it. Okay, my next goal was to read The Mystery of the Stolen Diamonds. Oh, whoops. Where is it? Mystery of the Stolen Diamonds by David A. Adler. This is the first book in the Kim Jensen series, and um, I've obviously, obviously never read the, any of the books in the series before, so that's why I'm reading book one. Uh, so Cam, oh, I don't remember what her real name is. It's not something similar to Cam at all, but everybody calls her Cam because she has a photographic memory. I don't know, like, I, I think I initially gave this three stars because I'm like, well, it's for kids, but honestly, there are just much better kids books, and um, I think I would probably lower it to two stars. I just didn't really love, like, the message in this. So basically there's a, a robbery from a jewelry store and she's outside of it when it happens and then they're like gonna get away like the jewelry robbers. So then she decides to chase after them, follow them as like an amateur sleuth who's like eight years old. Not only does she do that, but then she also takes along her friend and her friend's baby brother, who is literally like a few months old, who they're watching because this book was <laughs> written before that was not socially acceptable um, to like leave your like eight year old child to watch after this baby in the middle of like a busy mall um but like she takes them along and literally could have gotten this baby killed and then everybody's just like oh good job cam you're so smart we never would have caught him without you and there's like no like consequences or like upsetness at all like everybody's just like yay you're so great and i'm like um how about we ground her for like the next like four years and never let her near a baby again like 
she like follows them even though she knows they have a gun and then I don't know it's just like it really irritated me and like I get it's a kid's book it shouldn't have irritated me as much as it should but like there's so many good kids books and like I wouldn't give this to my future children to read or my nieces and nephews to read because I'm like what's wrong with you I don't know like I would consider trying future books in the series but also like the narration was very annoying <laughs> like every time she so, so she has like this photographic memory um but every time she wants to remember something so she like the way that she like triggers her photographic memory is by going click and it got really annoying in the audiobook <laughs> Her saying click just like that, like really vibrant and loud every time, super excitedly, every time she wanted to remember something. So I don't know if I would continue on, but if I did, it probably wouldn't be on audio. And I don't think I care enough to try it not on audio. But I think I am gonna bump my rating down because I was like trying to be generous because I'm like should I be rating books that are not meant for me? But, I mean, every book is meant for every person, right? <laughs> like, it could be. It has that potential, and that one just uh, failed, in my opinion. Uh, so, the next book that I read, my next goal was to read Murder of Crows uh, by Anne Bishop. This is the second book in the other series. I read the first book, like, literally beginning of 2017 so it's been a couple years um and I've forgotten way more than I thought I had but I was actually very impressed by Anne Bishop's way of recapping what had happened in the first book she did it just enough that it like triggered like the memories and events of the first book but it wasn't like super like info dump heavy constantly um so I really enjoyed that um, major, 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 major content warnings for, like, everything. <laughs> for, like, because the whole basis of this series is based off of, um, these women that are called Cassandra-san who cut themselves to, like, see visions. And it's, like, this addictive thing and they can't help but cut themselves so they've kind of got put into these almost like concentration camp-esque things where they're getting breeded and then the babies are being brought up and they're cut until they literally like go crazy because every cut they get closer to like the verge of insanity and then um they get like brutally raped a lot and then disposed as like bodies it's like very graphic and disturbing and like really really effed up and it's like the basis for the whole series so if you can't stomach that I definitely wouldn't recommend touching this series with like a 50 foot pole <laughs> sorry my feet are a little cold so I'm gonna grab my blanket um but it is like very also like I don't remember how gory the first book was but this definitely had a lot of gore and disturbingness and so much death and murder like s ridiculous amounts and I don't know it was like very like, tra traumatizing to read but also the story itself is so good so the first book follows uh, this girl, Meg, who ends up escaping from basically this, like, cassandra on concentration camp that she's literally been brought up in her whole life. And, uh, she, it, it didn't start as such a, like, an awful thing, but it turned into that. Originally, it was just, like, supposed to be this refuge for these girls so they could be regulated and not, like, literally kill themselves, because so many of them were on accident by like cutting themselves too deep and stuff but basically every time her body gets scratched enough to draw blood anytime any of them do then they like see this vision they see visions and they 
they speak them. And um, so the first one is her escaping from one of these camps with the help of a friend who grew up on the outside but was brought into this camp. And she escapes and uh, not only are there Cassandra-san, but also there are the others. So there's uh, shifters and like very, a ton of different types of like mythical creatures. And I don't really want to say what types of creatures there are because it's, I guess, definitely spoilers for a lot of the plot points in the first book. But there's a ton of different like really cool like mythical creatures. And it's like set in our world, but I'm not sure exactly where. And, but it's like a very like alt universe where the others have come out and there's like borders of like magical lands and they definitely like view humans as like prey and meat and don't really trust them but like the things that humans invent and create and that's kind of why they let them live um and so she ends up going and escaping and living in one of these camps that is uh like these little cities town things that is one of like the melding places between the others and the humans uh where they're trying to experiment to see if they can get along and live together and that's kind of where the first book like kicks off is her going to that town so this one it follows the events from the first book and uh it was really intense and very like nail biting and I couldn't put it down and I, <laughs> I read it in like two days and I'm really pumped to move on to the third book. I already have it on hold at the library. It's called Visions of Silver and oh, it's a it's a really good but it's very hard to read. Uh, but if you want to read it definitely be aware that there's like a ton of effed up stuff in it. I would definitely like maybe try to look up a list of like content warnings for it because I definitely am not the best at catching them, but it was very graphic in <laughs> some places. Um, you're in a reading slump after the Unhoneymooners. I really liked that book, especially the first half of it. I didn't love everything that happened in the second half, but I do really like that book. Okay, so my next goal was... Oh, I gave this one four stars, by the way. Um, my next goal was to read the uh, finish reading Royal Holiday by Jasmine Guillory. Um, this is the fourth book in her series. I don't know what the series is called. The Wedding Series? I don't know. Um, but I really liked this. It followed, uh, a woman, I think she is mid-50s, and there was a younger her hero who was, like, late 40s. So there is an age gap, and she's older, which is always nice to see. And she ends up going to... Okay, sorry. I got, <laughs> I got a notification and it distracted me. Um, hi, Keisha. You're working on challenges for Victober when you're not reading things for class. Have you been reading anything good? I'm technically reading something for Victober right now, which I'm impressed with myself about. Um, Although, I'm not really participating in Victober this year. Uh, anyway. I don't remember what I was saying. Oh yeah, Royal Holiday. So it's the fourth book in the series, and it follows the main character from the... I think it was, yeah, the third book's mother. And the main character from the third book is a stylist, and she ends up getting a gig to uh, style a duchess in... <laughs> England and and so she goes and it's like at Christmas time and she invites her mom with her as like her plus one like guest and so they spend Christmas in England together and so there is like mother-daughter bonding time but then it's also about this guy that she meets in England and it was just like super sweet and heartwarming and just like really positive and she's like a curvy black woman who's just like so wonderful and competent and good at her job and just like has a ton of self-esteem and it was just like really like positive to read and also very cute their relationship and I mean 
I feel like the ending was like a little drawn out and unnecessary, but I just feel like it had a, like a ton of positive messages and I really liked it a lot. I would say it's probably, I don't know, I think it's my s second favorite in the series, third favorite. I liked all of them. The first one is definitely my least favorite. Um, there's a part at the end of the second at the second book that really irritates me and if that wasn't in it that one would probably be my favorite or my second favorite so it's like but with that it's probably my third and then this one is my second and the wedding uh party is my first but the wedding date is my least favorite anyway i hope that made sense um Oh, you're rereading Dracula right now? How far are you in? And how many years is it your second? Is on your second round for a lottery a thon? I have no idea what that is. You read six books this week? Holy cow. You're a little over halfway through Dracula. Nice. Um, okay, the next book that I had for my goal this week was to read A Dance of Silver and Shadow. By Melanie Sellier. This was a reread for me. It's the first book in the Beyond the Four Kingdoms series and it is a retelling of the Twelve Dancing Princesses and um, I read it, I think I only read it last year but I challenged Kara to read it this year. I put it on a list of books that I really wanted her to read. She was reading it um, and we'd wanted to buddy read it since the beginning so we buddy read it this week together and it's really great. I think I've lowered my rating a tiny bit. I think originally it was four stars. I think it's a little bit closer to like three and a half now, but I'm still going to round up. Um, I think the first time I read it, the romance didn't bother me as much, but this time the romance bothered me a ton. The, mate, the guy was like super possessive and controlling and I had a lot of issues with him, but I really liked the rest of the book. Uh, that I think I really liked the rest of the book so much last time that I think I glossed over how much I didn't enjoy the relationship and just kind of like blocked it out but since I was discussing it with Kara every single day um I definitely focused on it more and it was just like <laughs> uh really irritating not my favorite so uh yeah but I really like it so this is basically I haven't read the Four Kingdoms series which the, which is the original fairy tale retelling series um uh, but I've read the first two books in this series the second one is a Beauty and the Beast retelling I really really don't care for it I found it pretty gosh darn unoriginal but I really like this one because um it's a tournament it's a tourney and the girls are all from like different families or a few of them are from the same family, so they're all around the same age. So I feel like the characters were a lot more developed. I really love the relationship between the main character and her sister, and between their friends, and all the female characters just had such great relationships and were building each other up and helping each other and protecting each other. And the main character definitely has this like savior complex where she feels like she needs to save and protect everyone. But like I feel like it was done in a very like believable way. And um, yeah, I'm going to skip the second book and then move right on to the third book, uh, which I haven't read yet and I'm very excited to read. I think it's a Snow Queen retelling and I would like to read the original before I move on to that one, but I'm really excited to do it. Holy crap, Lena. That's freaking incredible. Whoops, I just dropped my water bottle down the side of the bed. <laughs> um, holy cow. Okay. So my next goal for this month was to read um, Embrace Your Weird by Felicia Day. Face your fears and unleash creativity. And 
I DNF'd this book. I don't remember how many pages I got into it. I think it was around 25. It wasn't because it was bad, but it just wasn't for me. Like, I have no desire to unleash my creativity. <laughs> like, I'm perfectly happy with how much creativity is currently unleashed from me. It's just not the book for me. And I knew it wasn't going in, but I really like Felicia Day and her other book, You're Never Weird on the Internet Almost, is one of my favorite books. So I thought I would give it a try, but it just wasn't for me. So like, if you want to read it and you're interested in reading it, I say go for it. Just wasn't for me personally, um, which is a shame. I know, you've read so much this year, Bruna. It's flippin' amazing. Um, yeah, so Embrace Your Weird, I do enough, but, like, I'm not mad about it. Um, and then my next goal was to read Saving Jemima, which is by Julie Zickerfus, um, Life and Love with a Hard Luck Day, and I didn't read this. I just wasn't in a super big nonfiction mood. I think after DNF and Embrace Your Weird, I just was kind of over it. So my next goal, which was to start and read about the first half of Strange Harvest, The Hidden Histories of Seven Natural Objects by Edward Posnett, I also didn't read. I didn't touch these two. I just wasn't in the mood for them and wasn't going to try to force my way through them. Um, but... You'll see in my next goals how that works. Um, and then my next, my final two goals for the month are to read uh, Small Spaces by Catherine Arden. This is the first book in the series. Uh, Christopher's currently reading it and he's this far through because I finished it. I gave it 4.5 stars. I really, really liked it a lot. And I said, babe, you gotta read this because he just read Anna Dressed in Blood by uh, Blake. Cassandra Blake, is that her name? And he really didn't care for it, and I was like, here's a good horror, babe, that's younger, it will be fast and light and easy to read, but I freaking adored this. I was, like, shocked, <laughs> genuinely shocked by how much I ended up liking this book. Um, Kendar Blake, thank you. <laughs> I know this cover is really great. Oh, and it very much perfectly like embodies the story. So I would say definitely don't read the back of this book or the summary on Goodreads because it spoils like up to like halfway through the book. I was like, oh my gosh, I think it spoils up to over halfway through the book. Um, it was just like a lot. I don't know. It was annoying <laughs> that it did that, and Christopher read the back of the book, and yeah, I think it spoils, like, up to here, which is, like, halfway. So don't read the back, but this is, without being spoilery, this is um, about a girl named Ollie who is dealing with a lot of, like, grief and anger and just struggling, connecting with life, and um, basically all she does is read, and that's how she, like, functions, and she's kind of being called and known as, like, the really weird and odd girl, because she's just, like, so, like, depressed and, like, zombie-like, and um, she ends up going down to the creek one day, and she sees a lady about to throw a book in the creek and she's like you can't throw a book in a creek books are beautiful sacred things and that book looks really old and the lady's like acting really really weird and saying really strange things and so ollie kind of just like steals the book from her and runs and she starts reading this book and the book is called small spaces and there's a lot of weird things in the book and that's where I'll leave off. Uh, it is a 
children's horror book, and considering that it is horror, um, I wasn't expecting to like love it, but I really, really loved a lot of the messages in it. Um, Sorry, I was just getting distracted by reading your guys' comments. Um, I really liked the positivity in this book. I really liked the messages. I really liked Ollie as a character. I feel like she definitely wasn't perfect, but I liked her relationship with her father and how they're like working on it and dealing with it. I really enjoyed the message that just hiding your emotions and being very like stone-like is not necessarily be the same as being strong and that it takes a lot of strength to be vulnerable and show your emotions and express it. There is both male and female characters that cry in this book and are not ashamed of it and are just great and she has to like, I don't know, like there's a girl that in this book that like cries a lot and Ollie realizes, like, that doesn't mean that she's weak. And I really loved that. I loved the friendships. I loved all the book references in this. And it, like, referenced Alice in Wonderland. And, of course, I immediately caught it. And I was like, oh, they're quoting Alice in Wonderland. I love that knowledge is such an important and wonderful thing. And I loved all the different, there's, like, a ton of books that they reference in this. And a lot of, like, mythology and stuff that they reference as well. And it felt, like, organic, because, like, the kids are, like, 11. Like, they're young, but they're not, like, super young, and it feels like things that 11-year-olds would know if they cared to knew it. And so, I don't know, like, I just, like, it was so well-written. I just, like, adored. I adored it. It was so good. So I really liked that, and I recommend it for sure. Um... Okay, so my next goal, my final goal for the week was to read Moonstruck, and this is by Grace Ellis and Shay Beagle, um, volume one, Magic to Brew. So this is, like, a magical graphic novel. It's, like, very queer and, like, body positive, and it was fun, but it was just, like, a lot packed in to one graphic novel. There was like a ton of text in my opinion. I was just like a lot crammed in and then there was also this other like mini comic where they just had a page like every chapter, every issue of like there was something like totally non-related like a comic series that one of the characters liked and I really didn't enjoy that part at all. Like it just really threw me off and I didn't like getting sucked out in order to like have to read that because then it tied in at the end and I didn't really like how it tied in but like I really really liked the art and I liked the characters all right I especially liked this character she was great this one kind of irritated me she's the main character and she was like very whiny and very woe is me um which got like kind of irritating by the end um let's see one of my other favorite characters was this character who ends up having these like trances and visions all the time and I really really loved how she was drawn and I liked her as a character but there was a centaur character that was also kind of like very obnoxious personally in my opinion like not my favorite like I can understand why other people would love the characters in this but they just kind of irritated me a lot of the time um but I still liked it. I gave it three stars, and I would definitely read more by, especially this illustrator, uh, the artist Shay Beagle, because I loved the art. I loved the art so much, but the story I found kind of mediocre. It was just trying to do and be a lot, and <laughs> it didn't quite hit it. Okay, so those are my goals for the week. I hit all of them except for I DNF one book and then didn't even try to. So I got seven and 
I got eight out of ten bowls. Um, I did read more things though, so let's talk about the other books that I read. I already talked about all the picture books that I read last week, except for Star in the Jar, which is by Sam Hay and Sarah, um, I can't even read that, Bassini. So this is about a little boy who finds a star, and he's trying to figure out whose star it is. And it was really sweet. I liked the art a lot. I liked the message, and I gave it four stars. Um, next up. <sighs> okay. So I didn't read the entirety of this, but I thought I would mention that I'm currently making my way through <laughs> Howl's Moving Castle. Um, I read almost halfway through. This is like my second or third time reading it this year. Um, and I have read it like five times in the past few years. I read this book a lot and it's currently been my like fall asleep at night book. I'll just turn it on when I'm trying to fall asleep and I'll usually listen to anywhere between like one and like 40 or 50 pages depending on <laughs> my brain um and when it will let me fall asleep and my bladder and when it will let me fall asleep because I feel like I'm up and out like every like five minutes going to the bathroom um TMI maybe uh but I'm currently uh, 150 pages through this maybe so I thought I would mention that I have been reading it and focusing on it like the past couple weeks but especially this past like week I read like 100 pages or something I've really enjoyed it. I, it's, I love it. It's my favorite book. I would definitively say that House Moving Castle is my favorite book of all time. I love it so much. <laughs> um, so the next thing that I ended up reading last week was Wishful Thinking by Helen Harper. The series name is the is How to Be the Best Damn Fairy Godmother in the World or Die Trying. Book one. <laughs> um, so this is Wait, sorry. I like the movie of Stardust better than the book, but both are good, but the book, the movie is definitely better, <laughs> in my opinion, a lot better in my opinion. Um, okay, so this book, from guessing from like the series title, it's like very like funny. So basically, She's a dope fairy, which is someone who um, tries to help humans who are addicted to drugs admit they have a problem and get them in rehab, and they do it by like conjuring up illusions for them so that they can take less potent drugs, but they don't really know the people that they're helping don't really know that they're helping. It's like really weird and confusing. And then she ends up getting instead um, a job offer from the fairy godmothers and she's always wanted to be a fairy godmother. It's what she applied for and so now she's a fairy godmother. She leaves her job as a dope fairy, a dope fairy and becomes a fairy godmother only to find out that um, fairy godmothers have been going missing left and right and that's why they recruited recruit rec I can't talk rec recruited her basically it was because the numbers are low and then um it's about her like trying to figure out like where the fairies are going and who's taking them it was like very surprisingly like graphic and traumatizing like I wasn't expecting it and I feel like none of her other books have been but like basically the motions gets kicked off with her um with somebody's severed ear getting sent through the mail to the head fairy godmother and then um all the fairies pinkies get sent in through the mail as well all their pinkies have been ripped off and later you see someone's like pinky get bit off like it was like very traumatizing and like 
was a lot more like graphic and disturbing than I was expecting. Uh, yeah, it was like really effed up. And I was like, what am I reading? Like, because it was so like tonally off from the humor and the <laughs> some very serial killer books. I mean, but we're assuming that the, they're assuming that the fairies are alive though, because all the digits and everything are fresh. <sighs> um, <laughs> so it had a lot of like drugs in it and I don't know. It was just like her like sense of humor is like super bizarre, very British. Um, and like, I don't know, it was just like really weird. Like, it felt like I was reading two different books half the time, because, like, the subject matter was, like, so grim and dark. But then, what was, ha how the character was responding to things was, like, so silly and, like, has a lot of levity. It's almost like, um, <laughs> it's almost like Sophie Kinsella deciding to write a humorous, like, taking her, like, typical, like, humorous, quirky, kind of, like, their lives and this, like, the main type character that is, like, the stereotype in, like, every book I've read by Sophie Kinsella, taking that, like, character type and then writing that character into a fairy, fairy mystery that's, like, kind of twisted. It was, like, so bizarre. I don't remember. I wish I'd written it down because I don't remember. But there was a word that was used. Like, they're in London, I think. They're definitely in England. I think they're in London, though. Like... They're British. Everyone's British. And they ended up using a word, and I don't remember which one it was, but that was, like, American, and that British people wouldn't use. So I feel like the main- I feel like the author is not British, because I feel like a British person wouldn't have used that word, so that kind of threw me out of the story a bit as well, where I was like, um, that's not the right word. They would use a different word. Um, and I don't know which one it was. I wish I had written it down. Most of the stuff, I feel like they got right. But there was one that, like, even if, like, if I can pick out that something was not right, then it's definitely very wrong. Um, how not to be a fairy tale. Yeah, I don't know. Like, it was, it was super bizarre. But I would definitely read the second book. But, like, still, like... Slouch Fairy is just, like, so good. Slouch Fairy. Wow. Woo! Slouch Witch is just so good. That series, I just adore that trilogy so much. I feel like nothing else Helen Harper has written that I've read so far has, like, lived up to that, unfortunately. But I did still enjoy it. I gave it three stars. But it just, like, it was way darker but then, like, was a comedy at the same time. It was bizarre. Um, <laughs> okay, the next thing I read was Amelia Fang and the Barbaric Ball. This is by Laura Ellen Anderson, and this is about <laughs> Amelia Fang, who is a vampire, who goes to, a, like, a dark school, um, and they're, like, afraid of, like, light-dwelling creatures, like unicorns and fluffy-winged kittens and glitter is the worst thing ever and I don't know like it was very <laughs> reminiscent to me of me trying to read the that the Shannon Hale series the um fairy tale high whatever it's called like it was like super punny and really weird so basically her best friends is one of them is like a yeti and one of them is like a grim reaper 
and they're like all like seven and <laughs> and or maybe they're supposed to be older than that but they acted very young in my opinion and she has a pet pumpkin I don't remember what his name I think his name was squashy she has a pet pet pumpkin it was just like super super punny and ridiculous and just trying to be really really funny and I don't know I just like it definitely like missed for me it was still enjoyable so basically this prince yes monster high but younger um but yeah that's what the shannon hill one shannon hill book is it's the monster high but ever after high it reminded me of me trying to read the ever after ever after high books but slay yeah, slightly younger than that um like there was nothing like traumatizing or like age unappropriate in my opinion in this uh but it was really weird so basically the her mother and father are throwing the barbaric ball i really didn't one thing i must say here that i really didn't like i didn't like that the mother does all the planning and throwing the party and everything and the dad just does crossword puzzles and doesn't help with anything and she's like dad are you gonna help at all and he's like i did help I put my glass in the sink and she's like wow that's more than you normally do I just don't love the stereotype of like the man like never being willing to help and like not lifting a finger to help with housework and anything like that it really irritated me but besides the point um I it definitely like missed for me so anyway so the, her mother's throwing this barbaric ball and they do it every year and normally, because she's the host's child, she's the only kid there because no other kids are allowed. But now the the king and the prince are going to be coming. And so since, since the prince is coming, she's really excited because there's going to be someone her own age there. But then the prince comes and he's snooty and rude and the worst ever. And they don't get along. And um, I don't know. I didn't love it. I would say, yeah, definitely for the younger reader. It was, like, fine. But all the characters were very annoying. <laughs> um, okay, so I think that was everything I read last week, which was a lot. So my goal for last week was to read 2,227 2, pages with an average of 318 pages per day. And instead, I read 4,012 pages with an average of 573 pages per day. Or if you take out all the picture books that I read, which I wrapped up in last week's wrap-up, it was an average, and the one that I just talked about now, um, The Star in the Jar, was an average of 3,484 pages with an average page per day of 497 pages per day. So excuse me I read a lot basically <laughs> like I don't know how I read so much but I just flew through the books this week and was really enjoying reading so that's a thing um and I'm very proud of myself like I don't know how I did it but like <laughs> a pat on the back I like almost doubled my goal I don't know how anyway let's talk about what I plan on reading this next week um Oh wait, there's a couple book. oh, I didn't, there's two, three more books that I read that I just realized I didn't talk about that I also read last week. So these are the other th three books that I read that I just, I had physical copies, they weren't on my list, so like, I didn't, I forgot about them. Okay, first off, uh, let's talk about A Familiar Tale by Deli Delia James. Um, this is about a girl who has always had this like, she calls them vibes whenever she goes somewhere. She can tell <clears throat> either something that has happened there, the emotions that people were feeling there, or something that will happen there. She just feels it all the time. And she doesn't she can't shut it off. She doesn't know how to do that. And so she <laughs> constantly feels very overwhelmed. Um, but she I still have my bookmark in it. I was using a Kiki's delivery service bookmark, which I thought was appropriate considering there's a cat on it. Um, but uh, so there is a familiar tale. So this is the first book in a witch's cat 
mystery series and it's yeah this girl and she doesn't really believe in any other kind of like witchcraft or anything she's not like opposed to it necessarily like believing in it or anything but she doesn't know what like this vibe that she has is she ends up going uh her best friend has gotten a job in this town as a as a chef in a restaurant and she <laughs> goes to visit her with her for a couple weeks and she ends up um getting pulled into this mystery and realizing that witches are real and it all starts off with this familiar uh that is running around they call it like a ghost cat because nobody can catch it and it's always like disappearing from plain sight and uh she has no idea what's going on at first and kind of gets pulled into this mystery because this lady fell down the stairs and a lot of people think that it's a murder but nobody really knows for sure because there's no evidence and she ends up going to the place and getting a premonition and I don't know like there's a lot of weird stuff going on in this and going on in this book and I really actually enjoyed it a lot I ended up giving it like a 3.5 to 4 stars I definitely feel like it felt like it dragged at points but it never felt like any of the information I was being given was unnecessary or repeated so it felt very odd <laughs> like it was a very strange feeling reading it and it's like not long it's only 320 pages like it's a short book it's a short read but it did feel kind of long even though nothing was superfluous so like it was a weird reading feeling and I think that's why it's closer to like a 3.5 but I really liked it and um I'm really glad I read it. I'm going to read the next book. <laughs> I'm excited. Okay, next book that I read. Sorry, I'm burping so much. <laughs> Is City of Ghosts by Victoria Schwab. I'm reading lots of like horror and stuff. Uh, so this is about a girl, Cassidy, who um, had a near-death experience and ever since then she has been able to see ghosts by crossing over into the veil. And her best friend is a ghost and uh, her <laughs> parents don't know about it but they are actually like ghost enthusiasts. Her mother is a believer, her father is a skeptic, but they write papers about it and write books about it and they actually have a very well-selling series of books about ghosts and that series is is going to be turned into a TV show with them as hosts going around to different spooky towns and cities all over the world and um so their first stop is the city of ghosts which uh, is like where did they go again was it Edinburgh I don't remember it was in, I think it was in Scotland and um yeah I actually really enjoyed this I liked it. This is my first Victoria Schwab book that I remember reading and I liked it a lot. I liked the friendship. I enjoyed the, like, the mystery. It was very spooky and creepy but like just the right amounts and I don't know like if I had to recommend one to read out of these two, not that they're really similar at all, if I had to recommend one to read I personally enjoyed Small Spaces more but I think both are excellent and I'm really surprised by how much I enjoyed both of them. Um, I definitely liked the characters and the development in this one more. The story was very interesting in this one and was not quite as like on the edge of your seat as I was in this one. But personally that's almost like a bonus for me. I'm like oh it's not as creepy. I really enjoyed it though. I'm like I'm shocked by how much I enjoyed it and I already had the second book on hold from the library for both of these so I will be reading both of these very soon the sequels um and then the last book that I read was Castle Hangnail by Ursula Vernon um this is another pen name of hers is uh T. Kingfisher if in case you know that name um she writes a ton of like fairy tale retellings and stuff uh but Castle Hangnail is the is a standalone and it's about uh, a girl, oh gosh, what is her name, Molly? Yeah, Molly, and she shows up at Castle Hangnail, so, uh, Castle Hangnail is this, like, decrepit, falling-down castle, 
uh, that has six henchmen who live there. Two of them are minotaurs. One of them is like a Frankenstein's monster-esque creature. One of them is a knight ghost who is possessing a suit of armor. Um, all a, like, feels almost like the Tin Man, like his joints are rusted and everything. And then there's also a, wa a, a steam sprite and also, a, like, a doll that sews. And it's this, like, very eclectic group of characters. They're called henchmen and they're part of, like, the henchmen guild. And they haven't had a, man a master at Castle Hangnail for a long time. They're actually on the verge of getting shut down by the guild, the magic guild, and like being <laughs> shut down and reassigned. And they don't want that to happen because they're like this family unit. And um, so then Molly shows up and takes over the castle and is going to be their new master. But she's very young and doesn't really have a clue what she's doing. And there's like a lot of like mystery and ridiculousness in this. Like if you enjoy like the Enchanted Forest Chronicles by Patricia C. Reedy or like other like 90s fantasy, I feel like you would really like this. It was funny, it was silly, it was like all very much about like being evil and wicked. Uh, but like in like the most like delightful ways ever. So like the main character Molly is wicked is wicked but there's other characters that are evil and how they discern the two is that Molly <laughs> this is one of the thoughts that Molly has and it summed it up really well and I thought it was really funny it stuck with me that being wicked is turning someone into an earwig for a week to scare them and then being evil is turning someone into an earwig and stepping on them <laughs> So she's wicked. She's willing to punish people and like F with them, but she doesn't want to stomp on them. Um, anyway, I really, really liked it. I especially really liked the doll that like did all the sewing and stuff. I really liked Molly. It was just really ridiculous and the, the doll also has like a goldfish that is their friend and the goldfish is constantly wearing like little like coats and jackets and stuff because it's always cold that like the doll sews for them and stuff like it was like so ridiculous and so freaking enjoyable I like ate up every moment of it and it definitely like made me mad like the the evil villain in this infuriated me. They were actual the worst and I wanted to smash them. I wanted to turn them into an earwig and step on them. But I didn't. But they really pissed me off. Um anyway, so those are all the books I read this week. There were a lot, I know. Let's move on to my goals for this week. So my first goal is to was to read all in a drop. I've already completed a ton of my goals for the week, but I'm not going to wrap them up until next week because I've been talking for a really long time already and my voice is going a little sore and I've drunk most of my water and I have to go to the bathroom. So let's wrap this up quick. Excuse me. My first goal is to read All in a Drop. Um, how Anthony Van... Oh gosh, I don't know how to say his name. Leuvenhawk? Leuvenhawk? Discovered an Invisible World. And this is by Lori Alexander. So this is about the guy who... He didn't invent the microscope, but he invented a much more powerful form of the microscope and actually uh, discovered microbes. Um, it was a kid's book. I mean, it is a kid's book. It, it's like 100 pages long, but it, the, out, the audiobook is only like um, 80 minutes long, so like it was, there were not a lot of words per page and stuff. Um, but I really, I'm not doing a wrap-up. I don't know. I'm trying to wrap this up. This was my first goal. And my second goal, which I didn't do last week, but I'm putting it on for this week, is Saving Jemima, Life and Love with a Hard Luck Jade by Julie Zickerfoos. Spoilers, I've already read it and I really liked it. 
Okay, my next goal <laughs> was to read, oh, I have it over here. Ah. <laughs> my bookmark went flying off. But that is A Potion to Die For by Heather Blake. This is the first book in, I don't know what the series is called. Um, it's about this girl who lives in this, like, small town that's kind of known as, like, a marriage town because they don't have a lot of the same, I think it's in, it's somewhere in the south. It's not in Louisiana, but it's near it. Um, but they, the, a lot of the rules, the laws of the land don't apply to them, so a lot of people come to get married there and also to get divorces there. Um, but she is a witch, and she's very open about being a witch, and everybody knows that she's a witch, and she owns this, like, potion shop where she sells potions to people, and some people believe in it and some people don't, but she, this is her business. And then one day she goes to work, and there's someone dead in her store. And so it kind of, like, kicks off the mystery. Um, a lot of times I feel like when people are, like, in these cozy mysteries, when the people are, like, investigating the mystery, I feel like it's very annoying because I'm like, why is this your business? Stop being a busybody and stop shoving your nose into the business, into, like, the police's business. But for this, like, she's trying to clear her name because nobody's coming to her shop anymore. There was a murder there. People are dying. And nobody's, like, trusting her anymore. Like, she's literally can't, like, live without her source of income and stuff and she wants to clear her name because she feels like the police aren't doing it fast enough and so she kind of like takes matters into her own ham and hands and like goes like sleuthing herself but like it felt believable why she was doing it and definitely it was like in character for her as well but like I actually enjoyed how this was done although again like I don't know why I'm like reviewing these books um same thing with this, like, she has this vibe so she can use it, so it makes sense why she's doing it, especially since the case, case is already closed. It was a suicide. Not a suicide. It was an accident. They fell down the stairs. That's what happened. But she feels the vibe, and she wants to investigate because it's already, like, a closed case. Um, let's see. <laughs> bye, bye, bye. Well... I kind of already spoiled it, but I've already finished this, and so it's okay, the bookmark fell out. Um, I haven't updated it since yesterday, and I finished it today, because I was going out all day today. Anyway, um, okay, my next goal <laughs> is to read uh, Grave Memory by Kalena Price. This is the third book in the Grave Witch series, and um, the first book is about the girl who is a grave witch. She can raise, like, specters from the grave, and also she can communicate with ghosts. They're different things. Specters can only say exactly what the person was feeling in real life, or, like, ghosts are living beyond the grave and getting new information and are still, like, a person. Anyway, she's a grave witch. I read the first book, like, in 2016, so I can't really <laughs> say exactly. Like, the first book and the second book definitely have blended together in my mind at this point. I'm having a hard time saying stuff without, like, spoiling those two, but look it up if you want. Grave Witch is the first book. This is my goal to read this book. Um, next goal is to read The Beasts of Clawstone Castle by Eva Ibotson. I've only ever read one Eva Ibotson book before, and it was, like, ten years ago, and it was one of her, like, historical young adult romances, which is very different from what this is. It's about these kids who, very, like, a la Chronicles of Narnia, are going to the countryside to live with, like, some relatives for a little while, and this castle that they're going to be staying in... I don't know, it's, like, very, like, rundown, and it's, like tours are being given of it. I don't know. I haven't read enough that I can really tell you what it's about, but it's weird so far. Um, my next goal is to read Dracula. <laughs> Diana. Um, I've never read it before. I'm currently like 70 pages into it. I started it last night and, um, I have no idea 
where it's gonna go, but I'm liking it so far. It was I'm very weird. I don't know I don't know anything about the storyline of Dracula, so I'm along for the ride and I'm enjoying it so far. Um and I would like to read the whole thing this week. So that's my next goal. My goal after that is to read Loki by Mackenzie Lee. Um where mischief lies. I don't, this is a book that I'm actually, like, I will not be surprised if I DNF this. I tried to read Mackenzie Lee's other book, The Gentleman's Guide to Vice and Virtue, and I DNF'd it after, like, three pages because I hated it. Um, so I'm worried going into this, but also, and also, like, I personally don't love Loki. I know a lot of people love Loki, but personally, as far as, like, the MCU goes, he's not my favorite. So, I'm, like, not, I don't have super high hopes for this, but I do want to read more, like, Marvel books, and I really enjoyed, like, the Captain America, Captain America, oh, Captain Marvel book that I read earlier this year, so, like, I want to try it, but I don't have high hopes. <laughs> My next goal is to read Death at Wentwater Court. Uh, and this is by, oh gosh, Carol... Carola Dunn, and it is a Daisy D Daisy Dalrymple mystery. This is the first book in like a 20s mystery series, and I am currently also reading the Franny Fisher mystery series. I'm on book four for it, but the library doesn't have the audiobooks, so I've been buying them on Audible very <laughs> slowly. Um, because they're not very long, so it's like it feels like hard to justify like the price of a normal audiobook for like a five hour audiobook because they're so short, but the library has, like, a ton of these, so I want to start another, like, 20s mystery series. I hope I enjoy it. Um, my goal is not to read the entirety of the book, though. My goal is to read the first 190 pages. Um, and then my other two goals, going back to Howl's Moving Castle, um, I would like to read the next, uh, I wrote down 49 pages, but let's just say 50. To read the next 50 pages of this, it will not be hard for me at all because I'm enjoying my reread of it very much. Um, and then my next goal, my final goal, my 10th goal for the week is to read uh, Pilu of the Woods. And this is by my, my king, Bing, Bing Yen? <laughs> I don't know how to say any of these words. I really, really, really like the art in this book a lot. I've seen it at the bookstore. And so I decided to put it on hold at the library and I got it and I'm very excited to read it. It looks freaking adorable. Um, I don't know, like, it really fits in with, like, my creepy and, like, mystery vibes for the month. But I have it and I would like to get to it so I can return it so that other, so that other people can enjoy it. So... Anyway, those are my goals for the week. My goals are to read, that's a little bit more than my goals for last week, to read 2,408 pages, um, and that's an average of 344 pages per day. I feel like I can do that. Um, also, if I, like, run out of these goals, if I run out of, like, the books and, like, meet all my goals, I would, I did make myself a TBR jar. It's, like, very fall-looking um, that I can draw from as well. Um, that, it, that these are all books that I currently have, like, checked out from the library or are on my TBR for the month, which is a lot of books. <laughs> I definitely have way too many books checked out right now, but I'm very much, like, prioritizing the ones that people have holds on uh, behind me so that I can, like, get them read and return, and the ones that people don't have holds on I can, like, justify keeping for a bit longer and, like, renewing and stuff. Um... Okay, let's see. Yeah, Keisha loves Loki. See, like, I don't super care for Loki, so. <laughs> but I know so many people do. Um, you didn't hear great things about the Loki books, so you won't be holding your breath. Yeah, I'm, like, very much going into it, like, super low expectations. Like, I don't think I could have lower expectations than I have. So if I DNF it, no big deal. I'll just make up those pages elsewhere. <laughs> It's like 400 pages, so that will be easy to like 
like split up over a few different books and makeup um but yeah i don't have high hopes for it um anyway i think this is where i'm gonna wrap it up now i'm very happy with everything i read last week but it was it was a lot i'm very excited about my goals for this week um another thing that i wanted to mention i started a reread of northanger abbey i'm like 40 pages into it I just was feeling very, like, slumpy yesterday, so I started this as, like, a treat to myself. I'm like, at least you're reading if you're reading this. Even though it is a reread and I've read it a lot of times, I'm excited to reread it. So I started that, and I may dabble in it a little bit more this week if I have time. But I'm not, like, setting any page count for my goal or anything, because I'm trying to focus on books from the library that other people have holds on so I can get them read and returned. So, anyway, those are my goals for the week. Thank you guys for hanging out with me. I, I feel like it's been a very long time. My throat is telling me it's been a very long time. Um, but, um, thanks for being here. Y'all are the best ever. And I'll see you soon. I don't know if any of you guys are, well, some of you, I know a lot of you, probably all of you, have been on, are part of my Discord, but if you are not, then I've been posting a lot on there of like my reading updates as I go and just like my reading goals. So if you're interested in it, there's that. But if not, that's cool too. Um, anyway, thanks for hanging out with me. You think you're going to do the Austin along next year? Um, yeah, I, I don't know if I will do the Austin along. I'll, I'll probably like watch the live shows, but I... I just want to read them anyway, <laughs> like, and I want to read Northanger Abbey because it's, um, October and I'm reading all these spooky books and what better thing to read than <laughs> Jane Austen's spookiest book. Um, anyway, thank you all for joining me tonight, listening to me ramble forever. Um, I've been really enjoying doing YouTube again. Um... And thanks for always supporting me, even when I disappear for months at a time. Um, I will see you next week, or very much later this week. Either Sunday or probably Monday again, though, because I'm enjoying doing this Monday. Normally, it's after I get home from work. Right now, it is. I didn't go to work today, so I'm just doing it now. But um, I'm enjoying doing it after work on Monday. So anyway, um, I will see you all later. Bye, everyone.